Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about Hydream E1 image editing model. This is a really cool model. It essentially can in-paint for you or restyle an image for you without having to do any masking or using any control nets. And from what I've seen so far and what you're seeing from the examples at the beginning, it's really impressive. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button below. I've got a lot of really cool content coming out as well as this artificial studio tool that I created that will hopefully make just managing your whole AI environment better. So let's get right into Hydream E1. So if you don't want to use Artificial Studio, you can head over to my Patreon. I already have the links to all the downloads in this .sh file, and I have the workflow here as well. If you open up the .sh file, it's just a text file, and you could either put this into ChatGPT and, and just ask it for a list of the URLs and where to put the models, or you can read through it yourself and figure it out. Okay, if you wanna use Artificial Studio, if you don't already have access, you can hit me up on Discord or send me a message on Patreon, or you can leave a comment in the description below. I just need your GitHub username and I'll add you to the beta. So the way you use this tool is you just go to the model downloader and you'll see Hydream E1 full right here. Another cool thing about the app, I have links to all the project pages. So if you wanna read a little bit more about the project, you can head over there. So just check the box next to the model you wanna download and hit download. Mine just completes automatically because I already have the models downloaded. And then head over to app links, go to Comfy UI, and then the workflows are already all set up for you. So you just need to search for Hydream and then we're gonna use the Hydream E1 image editor. So this is what you'll get. If you used the Artificial Studio, everything will already be in the correct paths for you. You won't have to do anything. Um, if you didn't use Artificial Studio and you downloaded the models on your own, just make sure you set up all the paths correctly according to where you downloaded the models. Okay, so now let's get into doing a little bit of testing of this. One really cool thing about this model is it actually works with Hydrian Loras. So I just released a video about training Hydrian Loras if you want to check that out. And it's pretty cool because you can almost avoid control nets entirely and just use this to transform any image into an image with your character. So when you're doing things like, you know, using tools like Wanfun or Vase, you can just use this model, edit the image, and then pass that through your video sampler instead of having to use a control net, which can get complex. So we'll do a couple without the LoRa first, and then I'll show you the LoRa functionality because I think it's really cool. Let's use this image to start. And then all we need to do is prompt for what we want to change. So I'm going to say the image is Ghibli style. And the one catch here is it only works for 768 by 768 images right now. I'm hoping that there's a fix that comes out for that. Um, I don't know if that's intended or if it's just like the initial implementation, but hopefully a fix comes out. All right, so there you go. If you're looking for, you know, something that's similar to ChatGPT, I think this accomplishes it really, really well. All right, so now let's not change the style, but change something that's in the image. So I want to change the headphones to be white headphones. So all I say is the headphones are now white. And for some reason, the VRAM isn't getting cleared exactly correctly with the Clown Shark case sampler. You may have to just run it again. The VRAM requirements for this are right, or right around 20 gigabytes. I am using FP8 as well. I don't know if there are any GGuff models of E1 out yet, but they should work well once they come out. So keep an eye out for those if you can't run the full model. All right, so there you go. That worked really, really awesome. It kept the shape of the headphones extremely similar and just changed them to white. So really, really, really cool generation there. All right, so now I wanna show you editing with a Laura. So I have a Laura of like this superhero character that I trained. Um, she looks like this. And then I have a image of this woman in a dress. So I turned my Laura on and the first thing I want to do is I just want to change 
I just want to get the character that we have wearing this green mask over her eyes. So I'm just going to say the woman is now Verda wearing a green mask over her eyes. It did obviously put the green mask over her eyes. Kind of tried to adjust the face to match my Laura's face, uh, but because I didn't really give it enough freedom to adjust anything else, it kind of deformed the face a little bit. So next let's allow it to change the hair to brown hair as well and see if we get something that's even closer to our Laura. All right, so the woman is now Verda who has long brown hair wearing a green superhero mask over her eyes. All right, so this is evidence that the lore that I trained on, the full version of High Dream, does in fact work for E1 as well. So we got the same hair, same similar face shape, and you know it completely it started to completely stray away from from this woman's face, but it it kept her dress pretty much very similar, and it also kept the painting in the background the same as well, which is really really cool. All right, so now let's completely replace the woman with our character Laura. So we just need to describe the clothes now. Um, she is wearing, I in my Laura, I called her costume a trigger word. So I'm gonna say a, she's wearing a green turtle neck and pants costume. And that should be enough to take over the image completely, I think. All right, and there you go. Now we have our character completely replaced by the lore character. And you can see like, it's in the almost the exact same pose. So you could use this instead of a control net. You know, if we wanted to use something like Wanfun and create a video, you can take the first frame of that video, of any video and replace it with your lore character and then use Wanfun to generate the rest of the video with your with your character instead of the previous one. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna show you is we, and we can even restylize the Laura character as well in place. The woman is now a cartoon style and leave the rest of the prompt the same. All right, and there you go. Just really, really cool results, right? It even I kept the background exactly the same. Didn't restylize the background at all, but we got a completely restylized subject here that's in the same pose, smiling, but just a cartoon of my Laura instead. So, I mean, this model is super, super impressive. Probably one of the most impressive ones that I've messed with so far. All right, and then just to go through one that's not a human, Let's take a look at this dog. We're going to turn this dog into a line. All right. And you can see it just replaced the dog with a line. Okay. So that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Really, really cool model. I'm definitely going to be playing with it some more and seeing what, what other workflows I can incorporate it into. If you want to give Artificial Studio a shot, send me a message. Um, it's open, free while it's in beta. So check it out, see if it's useful. Follow me on X if you haven't followed me already. I post what I'm working on ahead of time there. So if you want to get a sneak peek of the videos, you can go check me out on X. Follow my Patreon, follow me on my other socials, anywhere you can give me a follow. It just helps, helps out the channel. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.